Hi, welcome back to the series about making the camber dress for my client. So at the end of the last video about making the leggings and gauntlets, um, I just put everything together roughly and I was going to get my client to try it on. Uh, the gauntlets were fine, I just need to add the elastic to those now. But other than that, the fit, the length, everything was good. The leggings, as I predicted, did need some changes. They were actually a little bit tight, so even though this mesh is really stretchy, I think because it hasn't got a huge amount of stretch that way, it um, yeah, just needed a little bit more width in it than her other leggings that I used to make the pattern, and it wasn't long enough at the top. And I've recut it um, longer at the top, a little bit wider at the waist, a little bit wider from in the leg from the crutch all the way down and yeah they were way way too short so I've had to add a lot of length to it so if I move it this way you can see all the length I've added yeah completely didn't do that right in the first place which that was just an oversight on my part not checking the length of the leggings on her that she gave me to take the pattern from um, it was a little tight on the ankle as well uh, so I've added more width here all the way up the leg and the extra length so next I'm going to overlock these together so I'm going to overlock the inside leg seam and then overlock the fronts and backs together and then I will show you how I'm going to add the elastic to the waist and the elastic to the gauntlets so my client has tried on the remade leggings with the extra length and the extra length at the top and the leg and the slight extra width up the leg as well and the fit was just fine so now I'm going to attach my waistband. So what I've done is I've taken a piece of elastic which I've measured around my client's waist. I've covered it in the mesh. I've just folded the mesh over and I've just zigzag stitched the two edges together just to hold it in place. And next I'm pinning right sides together with the top of the leggings. And I've matched up the seam of my elastic waistband with the centre back seam of the leggings. And I'm just pinning them together. So that's my waistband pinned right sides together with the top of the leggings. Next I'm going to overlock them together, giving it a really good stretch as I do it so they stay nice and stretchy for her to put on. So that's our finished waistband and it's nice and stretchy. And then we've just got the, um, the overlock seam on the inside. I'm really happy with that. To finish the tops and bottom of the gauntlet and to finish the bottom of the leggings, I'm using this soft lingerie elastic, which I got at Spotlight. So the first thing you need to do is measure around what you want to put the elastic onto and then cut your elastic either 15 or 20 percent shorter depending on how much stretch you need and then you need to allow one centimeter or so or half an inch either end to overlap as you stitch it on so with the soft side up you can feel there's a difference so with the soft side up and the little loops facing that way I'm just going to pin one end on then bring it round and overlap the other end and pin that on I'm using silk pins because I can stitch over them and because they're so thin you've got less chance of hitting them with a needle I don't normally don't sew over pins at all but sometimes you have to so next I'm going to find the halfway mark of the elastic and this and then pin that together and then from there you can kind of stretch and pin it together so it's nice and even stretch between the two so maybe let's find the middle of this part and pin that you can get it into small sections it's a bit easier to do now I can pin, if I sort of anchor that bit with my hand, I can stretch it and pin it at the same time. So 
Now I've got it pinned evenly all the way round. I'm going to stitch it on using a zigzag stitch. And I want one end of my zigzag to stop just before the little loops of the elastic. And I'm going to stretch it, try and stretch it evenly as I go. This mesh likes to curl up, which makes it a bit tricky. So once you've got it zigzagged onto the right side, you then just flip it to the inside and zigzag along it again, and you get the lovely little loops of the lingerie elastic just on the outside, like you would on a pair of knickers. So you can pin this if you want to, or you can just do it as you go round. I, like, I do this part just as I go. And again, stretch it as you go round. So that's how it looks when it's finished. So you've got just the little loops on the outside and the zigzag stitching. And then you see your two lines of stitching on the inside. And it's really, really stretchy still. So I'm going to finish the bottom of the leggings in exactly the same way. But I'll show you now how I do the point of the gauntlets. To finish the pointed end of the gauntlet, I've cut a piece of elastic 15% shorter than the measurement all the way around, and I've marked the centre of it. And I'm going to start by pinning that centre mark onto the seam. Again, with the right side of the elastic up and the little loops facing inwards. So next, I'm going to take one end and I'm going to pin that to the point. This looks a bit funny because I already did it once and my camera didn't record, so I've just unpicked it to do it again. So I'm going to pin that to the point and then pin it just up a couple of centimetres or about an inch without stretching the two. And then I'm going to stretch and pin the two layers between the seam and that point, which is it's not a big reduction of the length, so it's not a huge amount of stretching. And I'm going to come around to the other end and I'm just going to line up that end and put a pin just above where the elastic on the point starts on the opposite side. I'm not going to pin right to the end because we need to keep that part loose and stitch this first without that over it. So I'm going to do the same, pop a couple of pins without stretching and then stretch and pin the elastic and mesh between the seam and that pin there. And this mesh just wants to curl up all the time, it's annoying. So it's pinned all the way round except for this little bit here where it overlaps back at the point. So next I'm going to zigzag stitch along the edge like we did at the top, but I'm making sure I'm not catching that overlapped layer as I go, so I'm just sewing that single layer of elastic at the point. Just starting with a back stitch. And then hold that back to make sure I don't catch it. Cool, now I'm going to stretch it as I zigzag along. So I'm going to stop stitching just there I'm going to lift my foot up and I need to flip this piece of elastic at the point up and underneath. So you see that's turned underneath like we did at the top for the second row of stitching. Then I'm going to pull that piece back down and just stitch to the end, to the point. And then do a couple of back stitches.
So that's how the point looks when you've done the first row of stitching. So you've stitched that and then flipped it under and stitched that elastic on the top as it's come back round. So next, everything's going to get flipped to the inside and stitched again like at the top. But I'm just going to trim that excess here so it's not so bulky and so we're not seeing this part on the inside. And then keep this piece long here because we'll use that in a minute. And if you've got little bits like this that are wider than the elastic, you can just trim them off as well. God, these scissors are rubbish. All right, so now everything's going to the inside and I'm gonna zigzag stitch again on the outside. So that's what the point of our gauntlet looks like now. So we've got the nice elastic all the way around. It's lovely and stretchy. And then we've got this extra piece of elastic there, which we are now going to use to fold back and finish the inside. And I'm going to hand stitch my finger loop in at the same time. And um, in the past, what I've done is keep this elastic long and then stitch that back on itself to make the finger loop. But this can be a little bit too wide to go around a finger. So that's personal preference. Now I've, I've stitched this with the little loops of the lingerie elastic showing for that, that lingerie look. I like that. If you don't want the edge of your elastic to show like this, when you do your first line of stitching on the inside, just stitch right over the edge and then the whole thing will flip back and be hidden. So again, that's down to personal preference and what look you want when it's sewn. So, Right, so the last job is to stitch my finger loop on. So there's a couple of different ways you can do the finger loop at the end of these. As I said before, you can leave this end of the elastic long and then just loop it around on itself and stitch it to make your finger loop if your elastic's suitable. You could stitch another piece of elastic onto the end here and then just loop it round. But I'm actually going to hand stitch this because I want to use clear elastic for my loops. So I've made my finger loop, um, just folded the elastic over and then done a knot in it. This is really long because my client's got long hands and we don't want it to pull too tight. The reason I'm hand sewing this is with clear elastic, if you make holes in it with a needle, it's like a perforation and it can rip. So I'm actually going to stitch stitch it in place either side of the knot um, without going through the elastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of put it so it comes out the side there using a double thread. I'm going to stitch around the elastic either side of the knot to hold this firmly in place. I do one side and then the other side of the knot there. I'm just going to knot that off so it's nice and tight. Stitching either side of that's put it in there nice and securely. So I can just chop those ends off now. Then I'm just going to fold this piece of elastic back over on itself just to neaten the end and just stitch it. I'm going to stitch up the side and then back down this side and the knot of my elastic's nicely hidden inside then. Fasten that with a little knot as well. And then the last thing I'm going to do, because the elastic's coming out the side, is just put a couple of stitches to hold it. This is really hard to do leaning around the camera. Let's put my thread through to my point. And then I'm just going to stitch again going around and not through the elastic. Go around it a couple of times to hold it so it's coming right down off that point. And then fasten that one. So yeah, this is the slowest way to do it. It is a lot quicker just to leave your end longer and loop it back. But because I wanted to use the clear elastic, this is the best way to do that. And you can't machine sew it because it will break. So. That's the inside of the point, and then that's the outside. So it's a nice, neat, neat finish when it's on your hand. So that's all the sewing part of the gauntlets and the leggings done. So there's one gauntlet, other gauntlet, and the leggings, which now have the 
elastic at the bottom of the legs. So I'm going to put them to one side and then I'll keep working on those when it's time to do the embellishments. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next part of making my Canberra dress.